On this week's Rambler Sports Locker, the men's basketball team continues its success in the Missouri Valley Conference, and RSL reporter Alexis Flamber is profiles an integral player from the men's volleyball team. Also, RSL reporter Aaron Onion looks at the demands of being a student athlete. The Lincoln Ober and his Ramble analysis talk Super Bowl, and RSL reporter Patricia Martinez takes a look at what's trending. Patricia? With the Super Bowl quickly approaching, I took a look at what hashtags both players and social media users are using to hype up the big game. This and more on the Rambler Sports Locker. Welcome back to another edition of the Rambler Sports Locker. I'm Jasmine Marcos. And I'm Nick Schultz. Today's top story is how the men's basketball team is having the most successful Missouri Valley Conference run yet since joining the Valley in 2013. After being predicted to finish 7th in the MVC this year, the Ramblers sit in a tie for 3rd place after splitting a pair of games this weekend. The Ramblers headed to Indiana State on Saturday, and Milton Doyle's 20 points led the Ramblers to an 81-66 victory. Then they went for the season sweep against Missouri State on Tuesday. But they came up just short, falling to the Bears 82-81 in overtime, despite 5 players scoring in double digits. Loyola now sits at 16-7 and overall and 6-5 and in the Valley. Senior Milton Doyle was voted MVC Player of the Week for the second time this season after averaging 17 points per game and four rebounds. The women's basketball team hosted both Missouri State and Wichita State last week and saw defeat by hands of both teams. On January 27th, the Ramblers couldn't catch Missouri State, falling behind 26-8, and suffered defeat with a score of 60-32. Kiana Coomer recorded her second straight double-double in the loss, putting up 13 points and grabbing 10 rebounds. They didn't have much time to recover as Wichita State came to town on Sunday. The Ramblers kept pace with the Shockers early on. Here's Katie Salmon taking the feed from Tiara Wallace for the three. But Taquandra Mike was red hot for the Shockers, making all three of her three-pointers to come away with 20 points. Coomber drains this three, but the big story of the day was Brandy Seegers, who had a career-high 15 points, including this jumper from 15 feet. But Wichita State wouldn't let up, as Kayla Williams makes one of the team's eight threes on the day. Williams continued her scoring ways, but eventually Loyola fell to 83-64. The Ramblers fall to 2-18 on the season and 1-8 in the MVC. The track, and field team the track and field team continued their indoor campaign this, team, this time at the Black and Gold premiere in Iowa City. RSL reporter Blake Keller has the recap. Blake? Thanks, Nick. The track and field team completed action at the Black and Gold premiere in Iowa on January 27th and 28th. For the women, junior Casey Block ran to a first place finish in the mile run, posting a personal best of five minutes and one second. She bested her competition by five seconds. Block's personal best helped her secure a fourth place finish overall and is ranked ninth in the Missouri Valley Conference leaderboard. The men's team was led by sophomore Kevin White in his breakout campaign during the mile run. He also posted a personal best time of four minutes and 10 seconds. This places him fourth overall in the Valley. The men's 4x400 meter relay team of Jazz Hayes and Samuel Urban, Michael Edwards, and Octavian Wells claimed fifth, clocking in a time of 3 minutes 16 seconds. Kevin White, who was in the midst of a breakout campaign, was named the NBC Scholar Athlete of the Week. Holding a fourth place finish overall in the Valley, White also holds a 3.84 cumulative GPA as an environmental science major. White and the track and field team will tie up their running shoes again when they travel to South Bend for the Mayo Invitational on February 3rd and 4th. That's your track and field recap for the Rambler Sports Locker. I'm Blake Keller. Back to you, Nick. Thanks, Blake. As the men's volleyball team remains ranked 10th in the nation, one player in particular has had a key role in getting there. RSL reporter Alexis Flamberis talks volleyball and more with middle blocker Jeff Gendrick. Gendrick, the spike was hit up high into the netting area, Free but ball. that's still alive. Free ball's coming. Junior Jeff Gendrick is a middle blocker on Loyola's men's volleyball team. He fell in love with volleyball when he was 16 years old and he's been playing ever since. Gendrick's recognition began in 2015 during his freshman year when the men's volleyball team won the NCAA National Championship for the second year in a row. He was named most outstanding player in the championship tournament. I just remember at the end of the game, um, they said my name. And I had an outstanding game as well as Thomas Jessica, as well as everyone else. And I just remember they called my name and everyone just like picked me up and was just saying MVP. And like, I was just like, this can't be happening right now. It was, it was awesome. 
Even through all of this, Jendrick has remained humble, working extra hard to perfect his blocking. The finance major even devotes time to help out his younger teammates both on and off the court. This year I wanted to help the freshmen as much as I could. And I think I've been doing a good job just helping them with classes, on the court stuff, off the court stuff. So I think I'm doing a really good job with that. When he's not racking up kills, Jendrick says he enjoys playing Call of Duty with his roommates, although he hasn't had much time to play this semester. I'm a little bit of a gamer, uh, my room is as well. Uh, we've been playing Call of Duty. Although Jendrick and his teammates are in the middle of their season, he has high hopes for how the season ends. I think um, one big thing is we're hungry, you know, this year. Uh, we didn't do the, well, the best last year, but uh, this year is definitely a different mentality and we're going to work hard and try to get a national championship. For the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Alexis Flamboris. Thanks, Alexis. The team will be back at home to start MEBA play against Lindenwood on Friday and Quincy on Saturday. On top of home and away games, balancing sports while still being a student can be tough. RSL reporter Aaron Onion sat down with members of the men's volleyball team to talk about obstacles they face as a student athlete. Your average college student finds it difficult enough trying to balance school, a social life, and other responsibilities. Throw in competing at the highest level of collegiate sport, and that challenge becomes even greater. Jake Selsky, a junior libero on the Loyola men's volleyball team, says the jump from high school to college took an adjustment. Coach has really helped us out. We have to do like six study hours a week uh, up in Norville. That's required for freshmen. And they just provide us with all the resources we need to be successful. But there's definitely a learning curve. The first few months were definitely harder than I thought they were going to be. On the court, there is also a learning curve. Sophomore middle blocker Paul Narup says the transition into Division I volleyball was a step up from high school in several areas. You definitely don't expect how, how much bigger and stronger everyone is uh, compared to where you're at as a 17 and 18 year old. Everyone's just bigger, faster, and pretty much better at what they do. Juggling academic and athletic work can be difficult, but Selsky says the key to success lies in preparation. You know, we got to sacrifice some, you know, social gatherings on the weekends in order to get our uh, uh, homework done, just prioritizing. We know what's important to us, and that's school and volleyball. That comes first, and just go from there. With a full-time academic schedule and hours of practice and more intense competition, the Ramblers have a lot on their plates. But with a top 10 national ranking and several players on the academic all-conference list, they seem to have found the formula for success. For the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Aaron Onion. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Aaron. Last week, Loyola softball outfielder Erica Nagel was named 2017 preseason All-MBC. Honors are nothing new to the senior. Just last season, she earned first team All-MBC and National Fast Pitch Coaches and Association second team All-Midwest Region Accolades. In 2016, she set single season records with her batting average of 453. Nagel is set to help the Ramblers when their season kicks off with the Total Control Invitational in Roseland on February 10th, where they will host IUPUI in Western Illinois. The Loyola men's soccer team will have a new face on the sideline next year as Pat Flynn will take over as an assistant coach and recruiting coordinator. Flynn comes to Loyola from the University of Chicago, where he led the Maroons to three straight NCAA Division III tournament appearances. I had the chance to sit down with head coach Neil Jones, and he said he feels Flynn brings a lot to the program. Um, you know, he wanted to become involved in Division I, and, and once Nate left, uh, Pat was, Pat was uh, high on our list in terms of guys we wanted to add in. So. He's a great coach, cares about the program, cares about the players, and uh, we'll do an excellent job here. With the Super Bowl approaching, fans and players alike are taking to Twitter to express their excitement. RSL reporter Patricia Martinez gives her her hashtag trending topics. Thanks, Jasmine. The 51st Super Bowl is just around the corner. February 1st, the New England Patriots will take on the Atlanta Falcons at the NRG Stadium in Houston. Throughout this week, players from both teams have used social media to motivate themselves and their fans for the big day. The athletes from both teams have used a specific hashtag on both their Twitter and Instagram posts to hype up themselves up for the big game. Appearing in the Super Bowl eight times in franchise history, the most of any team, the New England Patriots are looking forward to bringing home yet another Lombardi Trophy. Quarterback Tom Brady and several other teammates posted on Twitter and Instagram this week with the hashtag OneMore. 
For Atlanta Falcons, this game against the Patriots will mark their first appearance in the Super Bowl since their loss in 99 against the Denver Broncos. Quarterback for the Falcons, Matt Ryan, has been captioning his Instagram post with the hashtag RiseUp in an effort to motivate his fans and his teammates, signaling that this is their time to bring home the Lombardi Trophy. The Atlanta Falcons Twitter account, as well as Matt Ryan himself, posted earlier this week pictures of the team celebrating a win using the hashtag RiseUp. But the conversation doesn't stop there. Who will win the big game? We'll just have to find out this Sunday. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Patricia Martinez. Let's send it over to Dylan Conover and his Ramble analysts as they discuss who they think will win the big game. Welcome to this week's Ramble. I'm Dylan Conover, and I'm joined today by Alfredo Rodriguez and new member Tim Edmonds. Guys, it's Super Bowl week, Super Bowl 51. Your task is simple. Convince me who's going to win. Tim, you go first. All right, well, I'll start with the Patriots. They're an experienced team with a core that's played in the Super Bowl before. Majority of the team was in the 2015 Super Bowl. They got the number one ranked defense in football, led by playmakers all across the field. And they're, they have the talent to stop Julio Jones, putting Malcolm Butler on him. And they can stop the two-headed running, running back attack with Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman. They got Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, the tandem that's won it all so many times. I think there's just too much going for this team for them to lose. All right, Alfredo, what do you think? I'll go with the Atlanta Falcons. They have Matt Ryan, the NFL, the, who, ha, who has more touchdown passes than Tom Brady, 38 to 28. I'll go with... Um, the best offense in the NFL so far, well, throughout the league, who scored 80, a total of 80 points in the divisional and NFC championship game. Now, Tim, I'll ask my first follow-up to you. You said they got Malcolm Butler, you know, the, the top-ranked scoring defense. I don't know if they're the top-ranked overall defense, uh, yeah. really, because, I, I mean, yards went to Houston. But anyway, about Malcolm Butler, uh, he got famous for, because of the Super Bowl, but it's not like he's a, you know, a top-tier cornerback. He's good. But do you really think he's enough to stop Julio Jones? Well, it's funny. I saw an article about this. Turns out they probably won't put Malcolm Butler on him. They'll put the number two and they'll shadow him with the safety. By shadowing him with the safety and putting him in double coverage the whole game, you're going to neutralize the number one target. And you're going to leave it to Mohamed Sanu and they're going to try and run it up the middle. Alan Branch, Jabal Sheard, they've got enough run D, a stout run D that's going to be able to stop them and hold them off. I think there's just the defense will be able to handle Matt Ryan because he's not mobile. This is the only thing that gives the Patriots problems is a mobile quarterback. We saw that in Russell Wilson, and that's why Seattle was favorited to beat the Patriots in 2015. I think Matt Ryan's just not mobile enough. He can't create plays with his feet. I think Patriots defense will handle them fine. And now, Alfredo, jumping on to Matt Ryan and the, um, and the Falcons, you mentioned he has the most passing touchdowns, but this is the number one scoring defense, overall defense, I guess, as well that they're going against, they say defense wins championships. So what happens when the Falcons go against the great just overall football mind that is Bill Belichick, especially for a team that has not won the Super Bowl? I'm glad that you say defense wins championships because the, the Falcons have the, the leader in sacks in the NFL. Big Beasley with 15.5 sacks throughout the season. He's gonna, I think he's going to be able to uh, make life really uncomfortable for Tom Brady and um, keeping him keeping him on the pocket not letting him to uh, through the touchdown passes that he usually throws and I do think that Matt Ryan is going through a very very special moment I think he's in his peak and I think New England won't be able to Do you to think that the, the Tom Brady effect and the fact that he's going for his fifth Super Bowl win and seven appearances do you think that that has you know any sort of advantage for the Patriots? Not, not really. Just because at the time when, when, the, when the whistle blows, everything that's left behind. Alfredo, what's your closing statement? I think New, I think New England won't be able to, won't be able to stop uh, Matt Ryan and his offense. I think Julio Jones is just in a great moment. Came back from scoring two touchdowns against uh, the, the Packers and. I just, and I just think that the Falcons will be able to stop Tom Brady. And Tim, what's your closing statement? Dylan, there's just too much going in New England's favor in this game. From their experience in big games before, Tom Brady's played in set, seven Super Bowls now. They play in these big games every season. The fact that Tom Brady's on the field and the strength of their defense 
and having Bill Belichick the mind to pick apart this Atlanta offense. There's too much, and I don't. There's too much going against Atlanta. I don't see how anybody can go against the Patriots in this game, and that's why they're favored. Uh, we could argue about this. The real debate is whether the Super Bowl commercials are going to be good this year. But as far as the two teams are concerned, I think I'm going to have to lean towards tw Tim, actually. I think the Brady effect is a little too much to handle, and the overall defense might cause problems for the offense. It'll be a good game, that's for sure. But we're going to give the win this week. Tim, good start for you, Tim. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Dylan. Although with all the hype surrounding the Super Bowl, you know, opening day is just two months from today, right? I mean, that's something to be positive about. For our full episodes and the chance to get in on the conversation, follow and like our social media handles for an up-to-date look at all things Rambler Sports. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Nick Schultz. And I'm Jasmine Markles. Check back next week for another episode of the Rambler Sports Locker. And as always, don't forget to turn out the lights. <laughs>